This video is made using Rasma. More about that at the end. It is very common to have a dog as a pet or a cat as a pet, but not so common to have an elephant as a pet or maybe a kangaroo. And you might notice that words like dog and cat are a bit shorter than elephant or kangaroo. So humans tend to shorten the words that we use frequently. If we're going to talk about dogs and cats the whole time, then we might as well shorten the words so they are easier to, to say and pronounce. So the words that are used commonly have less syllables than the words that are not used as often. And that's exactly what we are going to do today. And this is what we call the Hoffman encoding. So let's check this example. We have A, B, A, B, B, A, A. A, C. That's just an example string and we need to compress it. Of course, obviously, uh, since, uh, like, I mean, we, we, we know exactly that uh, in ASCII at least we have one byte per character. So, of course, we're not going to use one entire byte per character. We are going to uh, have a dictionary of all the things that we are using. So, we only use A, B, C here. So, it doesn't make sense to uh, allocate one entire byte per character. So, how many uh, bits do we need to represent three things? We need two bits. So let's just assign 0, 0 uh, to A, 0, 1 to B, and 1, 0 to C. That's the least we could do. That's not even the compression we are going through now. That's just something obvious that we should have done uh, in the beginning. Now, uh, let's exploit the fact that A has been repeated too many times. Like A is occurring a lot. And it doesn't make sense to give it like two bits. What if we just give it just one? I mean, we still need to apply this principle of, of giving short codes to uh, frequently occurring items. So uh, A would have the value zero and B, maybe one. And C, I guess, I mean, it's less occurring, so let's give it a longer code, which would be like, I don't know, one zero. But the problem is a code like one zero might be mistaken for BA. Like, how do we know if one zero means C or one zero means like B and A? It's confusing. It's ambiguous. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to assign it this way. So B would take one zero. C would take 1-1. One, one. Now we have no uh, ambiguity. Now everything is clear. We never have any code that is a prefix of another code. So this code is 0. We never have anything starting from 0. This code is 1-0. We never had any other code starting from 1-0. And that's it. And um, now question. If we have a fixed length code, like every character is 2 bits, how many uh, bits do we need? In this case, one 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that would be 9 times 2. That is 18. All right. So 18. Uh, how many bits do we need now? Now that we applied uh, a variable length. All right. Let's uh, calculate the frequencies. So A is occurring only uh, 5 times. B occurs only uh, 2 times. C occurs 1 time. So that's going to be... 5 times 1 plus uh, 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2 equal 13. So we have got 13 bits, so we have saved quite some bits. So now if we are encoding this thing, uh, what do we expect? So if we are, uh, sorry, if we are decoding and then suddenly I, so I'm, st let's pretend this is like kind of a state machine. So I am going to decode now and I find a zero. So if I find a zero, that means it's an A. If I find, and that's it, like I, I, I just go back. If I find a one, so here's if I find a zero, if I find a one, that means it, it's either a B or a C. So either a B, if I find a zero after this one, then it's a B. If I find a one after this, it's a C. So this is some kind of a state machine. Like you can pretend it's a state machine for now. 
So if it's 0, that's an A. If it's 1, I have to think it's either it's B or a C. That's how it's going to be when you are uh, decoding. So uh, when you are encoding, of course, you're just going to, you are going to substitute. So um, the substitute for this code would be, uh, let's do it uh, quickly. So that would be 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then if you are decoding or decompressing, you're going to go through this uh, decision tree or whatever that is, state machine, let's say, or actually binary tree. So if you see a 0, you know exactly it's an A. If you see a 1, then it's either B or C. So then you check. So yeah, 0 is an A. And then uh, 1 means we have to check either it's B or C, so then the next would be 0, now we are here, so okay, we, we have reached uh, a leaf node, so it's B, then now we are at 0 again, so we are here again, so it's an A, uh, and so on. So it's like a decision tree that, or a state machine that you go through when you are decompressing, that's exactly uh, the dictionary that you are going to get. And notice here that this tree is uh, is balanced. Like if it's a binary tree, there is some balance to it. How? Because um, A has got a weight of 5, right? So A has got a weight of 5. Because it has got like, uh, it occurred 5 times, so it has got an occurrence of 5. B and C together, so this whole branch is A, this whole branch uh, is BC. So BC combined has got a weight of 3. Their weight combined is kind of balanced, like that's the closest we can get to 50-50 between 5 and 3. Like at least it's not like, uh, like if, if we have got these two together, then it would be like 7 to 1 and that wouldn't be as fair as 3 to 5. Uh, and then also here, uh, I mean, we didn't have really any choice, but that's the closest we could get to a 50-50. So this had a weight of uh, 2 and this had a weight of 1. Combined, they are 3, but at least it's balanced, kind of balanced. Uh, that's the best we could do here to achieve the, the most 50-50 balance. All right, uh, let's do a more complicated example then. Let's check an example like this. So we have got B, 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 A. B, B, A, C, E. And now let's put our dictionary here. So we've got A and B and C and E. Uh, and of course, if we have a fixed length uh, code, that would be uh, two bits as well. So nine characters times two equal 18 as well. So that's the same. Uh, that's the fixed length. Let's see the variable length. How much are we going to save? All right. So how many B's do we have? Or how many A's? Let's count the A's. So that would be 1 and 2. How many B's do we have? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be 5. How many C's do we have? We have got 1 and E also 1. So that would be 1 and 1. So uh, what code should we assign to character? Well, I think First, we need to see what is the most frequent one, and we assign the shortest code to the most frequent one, which is going to be B. Uh, but first, let's sort them. Uh, so here, uh, I think yeah, we need to uh, put B first, so it's better for them to be sorted. Okay, so I'm going to put A and B. So it's going to be B, A, C, E, and then B had uh, 5, A had 2, C had 1, E had 1. Now, after sorting, uh, where does it make sense to draw the line? Like, which uh, group should have a shorter code and which group should have a longer code? Like, should we put B and A together and then uh, C and E? Or should we? is it more fair to put B alone and A, C, E alone? Uh, or maybe, like, one group is E and one group is B, C, A which division makes more sense, which division is more balanced. If we draw the line here, then this means that one group is, has got a weight of 1 and the other group has got a weight of 8. That doesn't seem fair. Uh, if we draw the line here, so one group would be 2, one group would be 7. Doesn't seem fair as well. If we draw the line here, then one group would be 4, another group would be 5. That, that's 
the closest to 50 50 that we could get so we are going to make uh, the binary tree right here so one group is b now we have drawn the line here so this already this is already like one element we don't need to divide it anymore uh, but this group we need to divide it because it's still a list uh, let's divide it so where does it make sense again uh, we need to divide this group does it make sense to put the line here or here I think from the weights this is 2 and the this is uh, 2 as well so it makes sense to draw the line here so that's what we're going to do so we have here one group is uh, has got A and the other group has got the rest so we need to divide this as well so it still makes sense to draw the line here because that's the only option uh, so now we have got another group so we have C and E and now we can assign the codes so left is 0 right is 1 left is 0 right is 1 left is 0 right is 1 and then the codes would be um, so to, to arrive at B we have to go through 0 so B is only 0 uh, here A is uh, 1 and then 0 so 1 0 um, C is 1 and then 1 and then 0 so 1 1 0 and then uh, E is 1 and 1 and 1 so that's 1 1 1 and that's it and now if we do the calculations this would sum up to um, 11 bits so we have got uh, 5 5 B's of length 1 so that's 5 plus uh, 2 of length 2 that's uh, 9 and then uh, we have got two threes so that would be 15 in total so we came from 18 and now we are at 15 so we saved quite some bits and hopefully you could save much more if you have a bigger file or bigger set of data all right so uh, let's get a more complicated example now we have this string this is a test for Hoffman encoding now let's do the same thing again and uh, let's do our statistics and frequencies so we have got let's just ignore the the case for now so t was uppercase t would be like lowercase t uh, and let's do uh, our statistics table And now after sorting it should look like this so here we have a much bigger uh, group I mean the usual method we did in the previous example was to divide the big group into two smaller groups and then each smaller group we divided into mo even more groups until each group is just uh, one item but here this time we're gonna do it differently so instead of dividing the big into small we're gonna assemble the small into big so what is the smallest two items we have? The smallest two items we have are G and D. So let's group them together and uh, make a group uh, as G and D. So here we're going to put G and D as two together into a small tree. And now they are, as they are like one whole group, we're going to... Uh, remove them and put them into one uh, united group so they are going to be like this they're going to be G D and their weight is going to be 2 their weight is going to be 2 combined but now it seems that we need to resort the array because the lowest are no longer uh, one like the, the lowest now is C not G and D combined so this has to go up here and now we ask the same question again what are the lowest two that seems to be C and M. All right, so we put C and M here as well. So, and that is another tree. And in this case, we need to replace them with uh, a combined object with C and M together. And don't forget to adjust the sorting and we do the same thing on repeat. And now the lowest two is uh, R and U. And now what are the lowest two now? 
these two uh, small trees, RU and, S and, and CM. So now we need to group them together here. And we combine and sort once again. And it seems that we are finally done and there is our tree. So let's assign the codes. Of course, yeah, you, we know that left is zero, right is one, zero, one. And there you go, that was Hoffman encoding for you. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Here's an efficient way to make educational Blackboard videos. First, record your audio while explaining on the blackboard. Once you're done, you can perfect your animations in the edit mode. And finally, with a few clicks, your video is ready to be rendered. Rasma, the natural way to create animations.